what Lotus Land is a botanic garden now. In the past, it, it was uh, the private residence of Madame Gonawalska. Uh, to encourage bees uh, is really part of the, the larger goal of encouraging insects. And so mm -hmm. to do that, um, any entomologist will tell you, you need to plant plants that are, have the right quality of pollen and nectar and the right quantity. You can't just plant any plant. You have to focus on plants known to provide nectar and pollen for insects. Beekeepers of uh, Santa Barbara Beekeeper Association, they provide seed when you visit their booth at Earth Day. Mm -hmm. Uh, they don't give you bees, they give you seeds to plant flowers for the bees. We've been doing that for over a decade now, planting uh, mainly native plants, native California plants, which are perfect in providing the right quality and quantity of nectar and pollen. Mm -hmm. um, but also there are some ornamental plants that are they're excellent. We encourage insects in general because mm -hmm. we found that they are by far more effective in controlling any uh, insect problems mm -hmm. uh, versus using pesticides, which we no longer use and we have no longer have the problems that we uh, had in the mm -hmm. past. So we know that's working. The Mediterranean honeybee, is, uh, the benefit is honey. So yeah. we'll have great pollinators, obviously. They're very hard working, mm -hmm. but we will maintain two hives in the orchard and we will eventually, in probably one to two years, have all the honey we need probably to enjoy yeah. and sell in the gift shop and whatnot. Yeah. Really looking forward to that. Our own high quality, exotic, lotus land honey. Well, in the past, it's always been just dealing with feral swarms, uh, and usually we just give them their space. But yeah, it's changed to ours from our our relationship with the bees out there, the feral colonies, from a defensive, uh, you know, relationship to um, a more proactive, uh, mutual relationship, mm -hmm. mutually beneficial relationship. So we're relocating some of our feral colonies to safer locations, and that way we can still have the bees, but they won't be. Um, you know, impacting our tours. We have a lot of opportunities to, to help sandbar beekeepers, to help bees, to help um, our educational program, and the bees are just a perfect uh, tool for that. I think some of the negative things that are happening with bees have helped promote uh, people's enthusiasm to keep bees. I've met with many families that have uh, taken over uh, much more gardening now and landscaping and um, they may not all become beekeepers but some of them are. Yeah. And uh, I'll be telling them that I'm doing it. We have uh, one dead oak tree that has a wild hive in it. Instead of cutting down that tree, we leave it for the wildlife, for bees, and actually as a bruise for uh, owls and hawks as well. And then uh, we always leave rows of flowering, especially herbs, as uh, pollen sources. They have good memory and they go back to the same place and they have a wide range but if they can find things locally then yeah. that's beneficial for our farm and it's better for them too. When you have the huge demand for, for bees for pollination in the spring right. but then there's not enough uh, flowers during the summer uh, mm -hmm. or the winter. Uh, planting um, cover crops on the orchard floor or in the perimeters mm -hmm. um, uh, that are flowering and, and choosing some um, flowers that will you know, um, be viable at different times throughout the year so the, yeah. the bees always yeah. have something to forage on. You could say that, that you know, if the, if the bees are healthy, doing well, that, they, that you'll have a better pollination rate.